Welcome to our lecture online. Now our next example is a little bit more complicated. However, we're going to use the same techniques as we did before. Notice the denominator now is squared. We can still use the trig substitution. The adjacent side is the square root of a. The opposite side is the square root of b times x. And of course, then we have the hypotenuse. So again, we use the tangent as being the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. We solve for x. We then take the differential dx, which we can write in terms of the secant square or 1 over the cosine square, which is probably a better way to do it for this particular problem. And then we can say that the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So we can solve for a plus bx squared. That is going to be equal to a divided by the cosine squared. We can now go ahead and substitute into our integral the dx and the denominator. So that becomes as follows. Instead of dx, we're going to write the square root of a over b, and I can pull that outside integral sign, square root of a over b, times 1 over the cosine squared, theta d theta, divided by the denominator. Now notice, the denominator is a plus bx quantity squared. And so therefore, we take this and square that, so we end up with a squared divided by the cosine to the fourth power of theta. Now, let's see here. We have 1 over the cosine squared divided by a squared over the cosine to the fourth, so that's the same as multiplied by its inverse. And then we can pull out the a squared here, so this becomes equal to 1 over, well, let's see here, uh, 1 over a squared times the square root of a over b times the integral of the cosine squared of theta d theta. So when we simplify this, we end up with a cosine squared of theta in the numerator, and the 1 over a squared gets pulled out of the integral sign. So now before we integrate that, we can rewrite this as follows. This becomes equal to 1 over a squared times the square root of a over b times 1 half times the integral of 1 minus the cosine, or no, that should be 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta, and of course the whole thing times d theta. That is an easy integral to integrate, because here we have just 1 times d theta, that's easy, and then we have a cosine of 2 theta, of course we need the proper differential. What we're going to need is as follows, so I'm going to separate those two integrals, so this becomes equal to 1 over 2a squared times the square root of a over b. And then we have the integral of d theta plus the integral of the cosine of 2 theta times, now we're going to need a 2d theta here, otherwise we can't integrate this, so we need a 2d theta, like so, and of course we have to divide by 2 as well. So now we can go ahead and integrate both integrals, and we get the following. We get this is equal to 1 over 2a squared times the square root of a over b. And then the integrals are relatively easy. This will be theta plus, here we get 1 half times the integral of the cosine of 2 theta is going to be the sine of 2 theta. And of course we have a constant of integration. Now, we don't have a good expression for the sine of 2 theta. We do have an expression for the cosine of theta. And we can also write that the sine of theta is going to be equal to the opposite side, which is the square root of b times x, divided by the hypotenuse. So we have an expression for the cosine of theta. We have one for the sine of theta. But we don't have one for the sine of 2 theta. But with a trigonometric identity, we can rewrite that. So let's go ahead and do that. So this becomes equal to 1 over 2a squared times the square root of a over b times theta. And the sine of 2 theta can be written as twice the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. So of course, the 2 cancels out to 1 half. So we end up with plus the sine of theta times the cosine of theta plus the constant of integration. So now we can go ahead and substitute in there what we have. Now for the 
theta, we have the arctangent of the square root of b over a times x. So this becomes equal to 1 over 2a squared times the square root of a over b times, that would be the inverse tangent of the square root of b over a times x plus, now the sine times the cosine, so it will be the product of these two right here, so it will give us the square root of a times b times x divided by the product of the two denominators, which is going to be a plus bx squared plus a constant of integration. And then we can rewrite that a little bit and simplify it a little bit more. When we multiply this times this, we'll write this first. So we have the square root of a times b times a, so we end up with, this is equal to 1 over the b's cancel out, so this would be 2a. Let's see if that's correct. So we have an, an a cancel out one of those a's, we have a 2, the b's cancel out, so we're left with 1 over 2a times x divided by a plus bx squared, so it's multiplying this times this, and then we have plus 1 over 2a squared times the square root of a over b, plus a constant of integration, and here we have the solution to that particular integral. So a little bit more complicated, but notice again using the trig substitutions, just like we did before, we end up with a good way to find the solution to this one. And that's how it's done.